Previously on World History and Geography. As the Roman Republic ended and the Roman Empire dominated the West, the Han Dynasty expanded and controlled the East. After the Han Dynasty collapsed in 220 CE, no emperor was strong enough to hold China together. Over the next 350 years, more than 30 local dynasties rose and fell. And now, our feature presentation. Finally, by 589 CE, an emperor named Wen Di united northern and southern China once again. China was now heading into a prolonged golden age, where it became the richest, most powerful, and most advanced country in the world. Wen Di declared himself the first emperor of the Sui dynasty, which lasted only through two emperors, from 581 to 618 CE. The Sui emperor's greatest accomplishment was the completion of the Grand Canal, a waterway that connected the Huanghe and the Changshan rivers. The canal provided a vital route for trade between the northern cities and the southern rice-producing region of the Chang Delta. About a million peasants dug for five years to complete the more than 1,000-mile-long waterway. Perhaps as many as half of the workers died on this project, while thousands died rebuilding the Great Wall. The endless labor for state projects turned the people against the Sui dynasty. Overworked and overtaxed, they finally revolted. In 618, a member of the imperial court assassinated the second Sui emperor. While short-lived, the Sui built a strong foundation for the great achievements of the next dynasty. The Tang dynasty ruled for nearly 300 years. Under the Tang rulers, the empire expanded. One of the rulers during this expansion was the Empress Wu Zhao. From about 660 CE on, she held the real power while weak emperors sat on the throne. Finally, in 690 CE, Empress Wu assumed the title of emperor for herself, the only woman ever to officially do so in China. Hey, did you know that with Chinese names, the family name comes first? Xing Ming. Like with Bruce Lee. In China, he would be known as Lee Bruce. So with Wu Zhao, her family name was Wu. Now you know. To manage their large empire, the Tang rulers needed to restore China's vast bureaucracy. They did this by reviving and expanding the civil service examination system begun by the Han Dynasty. A new, much larger upper class emerged, made up of scholar officials and their families. Such a class of powerful, well-to-do people is called the gentry. The gentry attained their status through education and civil service positions, rather than through land ownership. To meet the rising costs of government and the armies protecting the vast empire, Tang rulers imposed crushing taxes. Finally, in 907 CE, Chinese rebels sacked and burned the Tang capital and murdered the last Tang emperor, a child. After the fall of the Tang dynasty, rival warlords divided China into separate kingdoms. Then in 960 CE, an able general named Tai Tzu reunited most of China and proclaimed himself the first Song or Song emperor. The dynasty lasted from 960 to 1279 CE. In the early 1100s, a Manchurian people called the Churchin conquered northern China and established the Jin Empire of the north. The Churchin forced the Song to retreat south across the Huanghe. After 1127 CE, the Song emperors ruled only southern China, creating the Southern Song Dynasty. During the Tang and Song dynasties, China's population nearly doubled, soaring to 100 million. The rapid growth of China resulted in part from the introduction of a new variety of fast ripening rice from Vietnam around 1000 CE. This allowed the farmers to harvest two rice crops each year rather than one. China had become the most populous country in the world and the most technologically advanced. That reminds me, did you know chopsticks have been around for over 3,000 years? The pair of sticks is usually made of bamboo or wood and held in one hand using leverage to hold the food. I'm starting to get hungry. I don't know about these noodles. Back to the technological advances of the Tang and Song. With movable type, a printer could arrange blocks of individual characters in a frame to make a page for printing. Previously, printers had carved the words for a whole page into one block. Now the individual characters could be reused. Although more efficient than block printing, movable type printing was difficult in China due to the huge number of characters. Explosive powder, or gunpowder, was accidentally created by Chinese scientists looking for the formula for long life. It was first used in fireworks and then was used to propel arrows at the enemy. This led to the creation of explosive weapons such as bombs, guns, cannons, grenades, small rockets, and all those other weapons that we use to kill each other. Other important inventions of this period include porcelain. Porcelain is created from a special clay and mineral found only in China. The method of creation remained a Chinese secret for centuries and was so associated with Chinese culture that the porcelain is known as fine china. Now that's a great wall of China. And here are some examples of porcelain. And some more. Ooh. Yeah, how about some more? Other inventions include a mechanical clock, paper money, 钱, the use of the magnetic compass for navigating, 指南针, 
The Chinese made advances in arithmetic and algebra, like the use of negative numbers. Oh, and the rudder and acupuncture. Under the Tang and Song emperors, foreign trade flourished. Tang imperial armies guarded the Great Silk Roads, which linked China to the west. Eventually, however, China lost control over these routes during the Long Tang decline. After this time, Chinese merchants relied increasingly on ocean trade. Chinese advances in sailing technology, including the magnetic compass, made it possible for sea trade to expand. They sailed to India, the Persian Gulf, and even the coast of Africa. Goods, as well as ideas and religions, spread back and forth between China and the rest of the known world. The prosperity of the Tang and Song dynasties nursed an age of artistic brilliance. The Tang period produced great poetry. Two of its most celebrated poets were Li Bo, who wrote about life's pleasures, and Tu Fu, who praised Confucian virtues and order. Calligraphy, 书法 or the art of writing, was the visual art form prized above all others in traditional China. It wasn't until the Song Dynasty that painting shed its status as a mere craft and became art. 国画 Chinese painting reached new heights of beauty during the Song Dynasty. Painting of this era shows Taoist influence. Artists did not worry about three dimensions or realism, but emphasized the beauty of natural landscapes and objects such as a single branch or flower. The artists did not generally use bright colors. Black ink was their favorite paint. One disturbing view of beauty was evident with the custom of binding the feet of upper-class girls. When a girl was very young, her feet were bound tightly with cloth, which eventually broke the arch and curled all but the big toe under as their feet tried to grow. This produced what was admiringly called a lily foot. Women with bound feet were crippled for life. To others in society, such a woman reflected the wealth and prestige of her husband, who could afford such a beautiful but impractical wife. It just makes me sad. The social, economic, and technological transformations of the Tang and Song periods permanently shaped Chinese civilization. These advances endured even as China fell to a group of nomadic outsiders, the Mongols. 